In this presentation, I shall review a selection of artist books and broadsheets about Sherlock Holmes, the detective, Hopalong Cassidy, the cowboy, and Robin Boyd, the architect, produced by the Blackjack Press, established by me, Derham Groves, in 1997. The 10 to 20 page books are either A5 or A6 in size, while the single page broadsheets are A3, with both formats running to editions of about 20. They were printed on cheap paper using a Farley proofing press and hand bound using recycled materials such as cardboard from a nearby doggy treats factory. They are illustrated with lino cuts and printed found objects such as the heel of a shoe, the tread of, from a tire and timber off cuts. They often contain commercial and homemade rubber stamps, ephemera, especially business cards and cheap items Bay op shops and two dollar shops, such as fake mustaches, insoles, and plastic snakes. Sometimes they include bad poetry, which I believe is in keeping with my grunge style of printing. The items presented add to Holmes and Cassidy's reputations, and let's be honest, undermine Boyd's, who wrote two very snooty books, The Australian Ugliness and The Great Great Australian Dream, that have irked me ever since I read them in architecture school in the 1970s. According to the Sydney printmaker, archivist and collector, Jürgen Wegner, who's in the audience, the items produced by the Blackjack Press are, quote, as interesting as anything I've seen. Anyway, you decide. There's my press in the corner of my room at home. Uh, these are some influences, rubber stamps. I've been interested in correspondence art and rubber stamps since the 70s uh, and still use and own and use some rubber stamps I had as a six or seven year old. Um, <clears throat> so that's one influence. The other influence is uh, Brazilian Cordell's, little chapbooks um, made by Brazilian itinerant printers and illustrated with woodcuts and lino cuts. Okay, Sherlock Holmes. So this is just a selection of some of the books, not all of the books, not all of the representation of the books, but it, it does show you the sorts of things I'm interested in. Little lino cut on the cover by my son, who was probably about um, 10 at the time. Um, and this, this particular book was about a, a, a state agent, um, nearby. And so it contained ephemera from him, Wilkham, Wilson Sherlock Canham, his um, things like business cards, etc. I'm great for signatures. So we all signed it, my son, me and um, the estate agent, William Cannon. Um, and it contained ephemera uh, as well, en envelopes, a um, calendar. And I do some um, sort of uh, folk, naive um, lino cuts, and this was one. Here's some re more recent ones, Sherlock Holmes's Book of Mustaches. I went through, picked a few characters who had mustaches, and then associated those with mustaches that you can buy in a, um, a joke shop. Um, uh, Gruner, for example, had acid thrown in his face, so I um, uh, did accordingly to that. So these are the sorts of things I do. Um, a little joke sometimes that people may or may not get. Irene Adler, of course, was a woman. Um, we don't think she had a moustache, but if she did, instead of putting the moustache there, I put a razor blade, um, uh, presumably to shave it off. This was the cover. It looked, looked like a, looked like a moustache. So my fantasy was that when somebody was reading it, it would actually give them a, a moustache uh, while they were reading it like that. Here's another one, similar, similar thing. Sherlock's used cars. I managed to get a job lot of old uh, cars from a 60s newspaper for ads and things. And I associated um, the cars to various cat. Uh, characters in the Sherlock Holmes um, story. So Eugenia R Ronda, that's the veiled woman. So I put a veil on that particular car there. Also using rubber stamps and a bit of a monoprint there in, in there. I managed to get, I write to these people and they generally send me. So this was um, Sherlock used cards in, in Melbourne. 
uh, there was another one in in then this 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 one really interested me um it it's it's about villains tire tracks so I, for a, quite a long time i risked my life picking up little bits of tread on the sides of roads um, turning that into print blocks printing them giving them a name and trying to associate a rubber stamp with it so for example here stapleton from the um, hound of the Baskervilles. That piece of tread to me looked like a, a um, hound. So these these are the sorts of things I, I do. There's the man with the twisted lip. You see, that looks to me like a twisted lip. Um, the Boone Boone one. He's sort of so it's it's all of that stuff. Then um, that they came in a bag, and for the I think there were ten um additions in the bag i also gave them a block um, that i used on the printing there um, this one was a, a a a hidden book um cut into a a, a pulp fiction i dip, used different books so here it is here and it's called called bugs and the hidden cameras because i managed to get a job lot of um image blocks of tape recorders and cameras. And Altamont was a spy in one of the, the home stories. So he, here is this hidden in a book with all of these um, images. It's printed by von Bork. Um, that's another character. He was a drunk German and um, he, he made the mistake of leaving out the T, all quite deliberate. I can assure you, not um, when I printed that, but uh, I could incorporate that in, into the story. And then there was a bit of ephemera from Kodak that used a Sherlock Holmes motive in the past. And then at the end, I put the biographies of Altamont and Van Bork. Um, <clears throat> here, there's you know, things like this, a piece of tracing paper here with fog written on it. Um, uh, one of my lino cuts of 221B Baker Street. And these were little, in the stories, they often, um, Doyle would write, you know, the adventure of da-da, 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 always in three. And so I just had a job lot of blocks and I made up these stories. And of course, it only takes the title before you start composing the story in your head. So this was the adventure of the strong man, the VW and the Christmas turkeys. The adventure of the joker, the runaway lawnmower and the dead tree. See, I don't have to say any more and you've already started thinking about what that detective story is about. Um, the adventure of the bottles of wine, the fake Rolex and the horse trainer. And things like, you know, um, two to one, B was stamped, and this one was postmarked Watsonia. Um, the, the other one was uh, postmarked Holmes Glen. Boot, boot makers of Toronto, they, they're a, a Sherlock Holmes society in Canada, and the insole. And these were um, business card, Sherlock Holmes business cards from one particular collector, uh, George Vanderberg. And so you can see, you know, it had various things tipped in it um, as well, like the insole, et cetera. Uh, profiles by Gaslight. <clears throat> These are, this was an early one that I did of um, lino cuts of characters in the Sherlock Holmes. Um, so you can see the, the relationship to the Brazilian cuts early. These are, my, yeah, these are mine, Dr. Watson, Mr. Franklin, from the Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, two versions of that in two colors. Um, Dr. Grimsley Rylott from the Speckled Band, um, Jabez Wilson, and Blackjack of Ballarat. And my press is named after him because in the, here's the woodcut or the lino cut you can see. And in the Baker Street Irregulars, I was the first Australian member of the Baker Street Irregulars, and they gave me Blackjack of Ballarat as a name. And you can see I also whittle 
um, I'm retired, I should say, so I've got time on my hands, basically. Um, but you can see the sort of similarities between my whittled characters and my sort of lino cuts, basically. Uh, this one, my only concertina book, um, based on the speckled band. So you can see that's why it's that shape. And it consisted of some rubber stamps on a back background. My lino cut of Stoke Moran, the house um, in the speckled band. And this time I made actually business cards, printed them myself and got them signed by Julius Stoner in the Baker Street Irregulars, the person who was assigned that name, uh, signed it, et cetera. And the little, the little plastic snake on the, on the front. And you can see, uh, that's, that's the inside. One was on Tintin, Tintin and Sherlock Holmes, uh, called Parallel Worlds, Sherlock Holmes and Tintin and rubber stamps, and um, also um, my characters from Tintin, which were, um, so Moriarty was Professor Calculus, um, Watson was uh, Captain Haddock, uh, Holmes is Tintin, uh, Watson is also Snowy, um, Lestrade is the, um, you know, the Thompson, Thompson. And um, Castor, Castor Fiore is uh, Irene Adler. Now, my books aren't widely read, but somehow a guy in, in Denmark got onto this and wrote it up in an article just uh, this year. Uh, I also do kind of uh, uh, chat books with, with people. Um, these, are, these are some. Um, and I try to put a lino cut in them if I can, uh, tip one in. So this is Moriarty, this is Sherlock Holmes and Stephen Murray Smith, um, etc. I've started to expand a little bit. This is this is I'm doing some on Hopalong Cassidy. Uh, this one was based on this um, kid's clothes peg called the Hoppy Hoppy's Bunkhouse Clothes Corral. And it had a badge tipped in on the back. And inside, uh, there's a poem written by a friend, Craig Henricks in the States. He signed it, I signed it. Um, and in that little pocket, um, there's this poem. I won't read it, but I'm into bad poetry. You see. Uh, some works in progress is another one. Uh, Hop along Cassidy's um, uh, circus. You can see the, the the plate I've just covered up. That's offcuts from a, a local timber guy. And my poem: Roll up, roll up. Hoppy circus is in town. Hooray, hooray! This cowboy is no clown. He doesn't sing and he doesn't dance. But who's who cares? He's the ants' pants. Um, and finally, Robin Boyd. Um, I've I've hated this guy ever since I was a student, really. Absolute snob. Went to the University of Melbourne, where he was beloved by everybody except one member of staff, me. Um, didn't do my career any good, I can tell you. But when I retired, the last project I did was with uh, students called Reframing the Australian Ugliness. And so about 200 kids who used to do my course um, did re-editions, covers and altered books of, of the Australian ugliness. Um, one of the first books I ever, oh, here, here's some, some of the things that they did. Um, some, some praise Boyd, but most, um, you know, knew who was gonna mark their work. Um, <clears throat> this was one of the first, um, first books I ever did actually on uh, folk architecture. And um, it included this building by Boyd, which is the only building I, I think I, I liked, um, a, a fish and chip shop that he did. Um, there it is there. And so the last book that I did, um, that one ha hasn't, hasn't come out, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Uh, oh, hang on, I go back, I just go back one. Was this particular book um, on Robin Boyd, and my protest against featurism, which he didn't like, which I liked. And so this was my poem. I am annoyed by Robin Boyd. His buildings are so precious, not to mention the two 
books he wrote that are cruel and vicious. The best job he ever did was a South Yarra fishing shippery, but it came too late to redeem the snob, which is a great big pity. And down there, featureism is yes. And what I've done, I've highlighted every E. This is featureism. And one of its main functions, of course, is to actually misdirect. Uh, of course, Boyd didn't make any mistakes. He did. Um, so I, in this case, I deliberately put mis misspelled fish and chippery with another E. And so then I went through and highlighted every E. And of course, you don't notice these things when, when, when this happens. Okay, my last slide. Conclusion. The Blackjack Press focus on popular culture. It employs a grunge folk, everyday aesthetic using rubber stamps, movable metal, rubber and wood type, lino cuts and gel press monoprints while incorporating ephemera, found images, found objects, either as is or for printing with and recycled materials. My aim has always been to provide fun and enjoyment both for myself as maker and others as collectors, viewers. Regarding embellishment, I believe my books and broadsheets add to the understanding of the three cultural icons I've picked on, either in the form of a cherry on the cake or shit on their shoe. Once again, you decide. Thanks very much.